Oha ena manu kani leo o ke ia aina o kioto a me na kanaka maoli o ke ia aina mai kala hiki a kala akau a puni na moku a me na kai e valu. Aloha no, aloha no, aloha no. Greetings to the cheered voice birds of these sands of Kyoto and to the indigenous people of these sands, from the zenith to the horizon, from all the eight islands in the eight great seas, greetings indeed. First, I would like to thank Mr. Koji, Mizoguchi, Uzma, Hirofumi, and the WAC committee for inviting me here on behalf of Cultural Surveys Hawaii. My name is Auli I. Mitchell, and I am a cultural anthropologist working for the past 13 years in the disciplines of cultural and archaeological impact studies. Our firm was founded in 1982 by our president, archaeologist Dr. Hallett Hammett. My family descends from five sisters, Aana, Aima, Alai, Aoi, and Mihana, known as Kapua Okina, or the Flowers of China, of half Hawaiian and half Chinese ancestry. My great-great-grandmother Aana and her sisters, born in Hilo on the island of Hawaii, are direct descendants of the high chiefess Kiabehiku. I would like to begin with a quote by Mr. Hale Aloha Ayau, one of Hawaii's leading authorities on Ivi Kupuna, or our ancestral remains, and co-founder of Hui Malama Ina Kupuna o Hawaii Nei. Traditional Native Hawaiians believed in Ivi, or the bones, to be the primary physical embodiment of a person. Following death, only the Ivi were considered sacred, for within the bones resided the person's mana, or spiritual essence. Mana was greatly valued. The Kanaka Maoli, or Native Hawaiians, spent their lives maintaining and enhancing their mana. Thus, the ultimate care was given to the Ivi following death. Our ancestral bones were guarded, respected, venerated, and even deified. It was believed that the uhane, or spirit of a person, hovered near native Hawaiian ivi. Desecration of our ivi kupuna resulted in an insult to the uhane and disturbance and harm to living descendants. They are our most precious possessions, our mea makamai. How does repatriation fit into the context of Hawaii in the past and today? In 1966, the, Na the National Historic Preservation Act, or NEPA, was passed by the United States Congress. Their purpose is to assist Native American Indian tribes and Native Hawaiian organizations to, spend, to expand and accelerate their historic preservation programs and activities. At a state level, Hawaii passed the legislative equivalent to NEPA in 1976, the Hawaii Revised Statutes, or HRS, Chapter 6E, with the Department of Land and Natural Resources as the administrative agency. Chapter 6E articulates the state's policy to preserve, restore, and maintain historic and cultural property in a spirit of stewardship and trusteeship for further generations and to conduct activities and programs in a manner consistent with the preservation and enhancement of historic and cultural property. Just what inspired repatriation in Hawaii? It was in 1987 when developers began excavating a dune site at Honokahua on the island of Maui to make way for the construction of the Kapalua Resort or Ritz-Carlton, more than 1,100 sets of native Hawaiian human remains were exposed, including many believed to be those of Hawaiian royalty. It was this process and the scope of such a burial site that invoked a shift in Hawaiian consciousness, bringing forth protesters, carrying with them a great, great passion. 
resulting from the kalmaha, or heaviness, of the archaeological disinternment, Huimalama Inakupuna o Hawaii was born in December of 1988. Huimalama Inakupuna o Hawaii is a Native Hawaiian organization advocating for the beliefs and practices concerning all aspects in the caring of Native Hawaiian ancestral remains. Their goals include providing ancestral and living Native Hawaiians with traditional internment and reinternment services, providing cultural and legal oversight of federal, state, and county laws affecting Native Hawaiian burial sites, skeletal remains, and burial objects, helping to nourish the overall growth of traditional Native Hawaiian cultural beliefs and practices, so as to plant the seeds for Hawaii's future, and to repatriate all ancestral Native Hawaiian remains, burial objects, sacred objects, and objects of cultural patrimony. The State Historic Preservation Division, or we call SHPDI, was established with the Department of Land and Natural Resources, or DLNR, to administer Chapter 6E's Historic Preservation Program. SHPTI's management of this preservation program entails coming into possession of Native Hawaiian burials. SHPTI's duties, obligations, and authorities are governed by Hawaii Revised Statute 6E-43 through 6E-43.6. It is these sections that lay out a specific mechanism for the preservation of burial sites in Hawaii by creating two paths, one for previously identified burials and another for inadvertent discoveries. It also governs the composition of the island burial councils and their roles as advisors in the treatment of EV and burial sites. The island burial councils are established under Chapter 60-43.5. Each member is appointed by the governor of the state of Hawaii and the councils are based upon each island, Oahu, Hawaii, Maui and Lanai, Kaho'olawe, Kauai and Ni'ihau, and Molokai, to implement the burial laws. These councils assist Shipti with its inventory and identification of unmarked burial sites and make recommendations regarding the appropriate treatment and protection of our Ivi Kupuna. As the vice chair, of the Oahu Island Burial Council, I humbly assist my fellow board members in the important role of these councils to determine treatment, including the preservation or relocation of previously identified Native Hawaiian burial sites and the recognition of lineal and cultural descendants to previously identified EV kupuna. The decision-making role of the councils is limited to previously identified EV found during an archaeological assessment. The councils have only an advisory role for those EV discovered inadvertently during construction. In November of 1990, a United States federal law was enacted, as we all know, the Native American Grave Protection and Repatriation Act, known as NAGPRA. Um, NAGPRA covering repatriation at a United States federal, federal government level. This act requires federal agencies and institutions that receive federal funding to return Native American cultural items to lineal descendants and culturally affiliated Indian tribes and Native Hawaiian organizations. NAGPRA also establishes procedures for the inadvertent discovery or planned excavation of Native American cultural items or federal or tribal lands. While these provisions do not apply to discoveries or excavations on private or state lands, the collection and the provisions of the Act may apply to Native American cultural items if they come under the control of an institution that receives federal funding. Since then, Hui Malama Ina Kupuna O Hawaiine has dissolved in January of 2015. Their past efforts have resulted in the repatriation of almost 6,000 individuals. The nonprofit organization is now being 
looked at by other Native Hawaiian organizations dedicating, to continue, dedicating themselves to continue the mission of Hui Mala Maina Kupuna O Hawaii'ine. So today in the future, Indigenous rights and Indigenous knowledge of being recognized, are being recognized and applied to the Western science of archaeology. Cultural monitoring, now a new industry, places traditional cultural practitioners next to archaeological monitors working in the field. Their work is groundbreaking in the movement of recognizing Indigenous knowing as knowledge and applying indigenous methodologies to a Western field of science. These cultural monitors bring with them tacit knowledge of their traditions, customs, and beliefs given to them via the enduring knowledge systems of their ancestors. Today, we in Hawaii are witnessing three generations of Native Hawaiian practitioners working with archeologists where both are learning from each other embracing and caring for what man has left behind. We need both indigenous knowledge and academic knowledge to help interpret the big picture of anthropology, archeology span in Hawaii. Let us not forget and remember the other disciplines of anthropology, which helps support each discipline. It is my hope for the future that this movement leads to education and respect for archaeology throughout the eight islands of Hawaii, and may it radiate to all other indigenous archaeologists through the world. I leave you with this. The first burial of Hawaii, the progenitor of our people. Haloa Nakalau Kapalili, the firstborn son of Wakea, or Sky Father, and his daughter, Ohoku Kalani was of premature birth, Keiki Alualu, and was given the name Haloanaka. The little child died, however, and its body was buried in the ground at one end of the house. After a while, from the child's body shot up a taro plant, the leaf of which was called Lau Kapalili, or quivering leaf but the stem was given the name Haloa, the long breath. After that, another child was born to them, whom they called Haloa. From the stock of the taro plant, he is the progenitor of the Hawaiian race. Arigato gozaimasu. Mahalo. <laughs>